Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and in this video I'm going to be featuring two products. The first one is the Synology Disk Station DS211. Now I've reviewed a lot of Synology Disk Stations before and this one comes in three different models. You get the DS211J which is suitable for home to small office use. You get this model here which is the middle of the range, the DS211 suitable for home to business workgroup use and then top of the range is the DS211 Plus and that's suitable for small and medium business use. Now the differences between the three are purely as you go up the range you get more uh, RAM, you also get faster processor so the unit performs slightly better and can serve up content to more users. Now the actual form factor remains the same whichever model you go for it's a very nice pleasing white case design around the back here if I show you the back of the unit we've got a nice little fan very quiet in operation two USB sockets gigabit Ethernet connection a reset switch input for your power supply and also a Kensington lock so you can tether it down to a desk if you want to now there are two securing screws on the back in this top right hand corner I'll just remove that one there's also another one down here and this actual unit is a two bay uh, NAS server and what I mean by that is you can install two SATA hard drives in here and then put your content on them and share them across many many users now once those screws are removed I'll just get this case separated I can do it the right way round It actually unclips apart like so. You have to use a little bit of force to get it apart. Let me take you around this side. And then as you slide it apart, you can remove this side of the casing to gain access to the inside. If I just show you this side on, you can see here I've got two three and a half inch serial ATA drives in there. And they mount really easily. You just slide them in pop your securing screws in to the mounting bay either side they connect up really easily, they just slot in, there's no cables in this front section here, they just uh, sort of marry up really nicely to the interface at the front there and then once you've got those into the uh, into the DS211 you just pop the white casing back on slide back into place and then round the back here you just pop those securing screws back in like so and you're good to go now the thing I like about the Synology disk stations uh, and I've tested plenty of these is the disk station manager which is up to version 3 now I showed you in one of my previous reviews how that works with the USB disk station 2 and it works primarily the same with this unit uh, with the exception that you get a few more features thrown in on this one now I am going to show you how this works on screen and, um, and I'm sure you'll agree that it does deliver some superb features now I didn't show you the front, let me just show you the front of this unit we've got um, some status lights here uh, for the unit status, LAN connectivity hard drive activity, we've got another USB socket power on off switch down the bottom so fully featured at the front you get a lot of feedback from these LEDs and it really is just a pleasing little unit now what I've been using this one for is for actually backing up my video content it appears on my Mac OS X desktop uh, as, a, as a mounted volume and I can back up to this really easily using any backup software um, and that's just been performing extremely well very well indeed you can stick obviously two two terabyte hard drives in here and that will give you uh, up to four terabytes maximum capacity or you can set them up as a RAID so that one drive is mirrored to the other it supports all of those sort of features let me just run down some of the specifications for you it's got a 1.6 uh, gigahertz processor in here 256 megabytes of RAM uh, it can be used as an FTP server, web station, uh, DLNA and UPNP media server and what I mean by that is you could put all your movies on here and serve them up to your PS3 or Xbox 360 
It also acts as an iTunes server, so you could put your iTunes library on here and access that across uh, many computers on your home network. It also acts as a printer server as well. It's got Squeezebox server, mail station, Webalizer, uh, time backup as well. Loads and loads of extras. We've even got access to iPhone and Android apps uh, so that you can access your audio and photo and also the camera functions on here as well. We've got download station, which means it's got sort of a BitTorrent client, uh, means you can set a download going, switch off your computers and the DS211 will continue to download those files. Now, I mentioned very briefly there about DS Cam, which is an iPhone and Android app. Well, this also has uh, something called surveillance station and I'm going to show you that on screen but before I do I want to show you the second product that forms part of this video. So this is the second product that forms part of this review this is the YCAM Night S. You, know, you can check out all of their range at y-cam.com now this is an IP camera that connects to your network it allows you to perhaps monitor your equipment your home or perhaps your business and the reason I've included it in this review is not only does it work with its own software but it also works extremely well with the Synology surveillance station uh, software which I'm going to show you on screen as part of this review now let's just open this up and show what you show you what you get you get a quick start guide which is going to guide you to setting everything up also a quick start card we also get a setup CD as well we get a little box here and this contains let's crack this open we've got some power adapter converters for different countries we've also got a uh, ethernet cable there's another adapter there and then we get a multi voltage power adapter in the box and then this is the camera itself we get a little stand to put it on and then this is the YCAM Knight S now the reason it looks really weird is that this is set up for night vision as well uh, it records both video and sound and it's got 30 infrared LEDs around the outside so in very very dark environments this will still allow you to record video now it does have a little bit of a downside is because this is set up for night vision under normal lighting you do get weird colors but that's uh, part of the parcel with this sort of product it works on PC, Mac, Linux and I'm going to set this up now and then show you it in situ and show you the results of the video using surveillance station with that Synology DS211. So here you can see I've set up the Ycam, albeit rather crudely. I haven't attached it with the bracket to the wall or anything. You can see it's sitting on top of my speaker there and I've positioned it so that it's looking over all of my equipment. Now I'm going to switch to my uh, disk station manager software on screen now and show you the surveillance station feature and how you can configure the YCAM and get into its settings and look at the recordings it's making. Now before I do so I will show you a very quick close up of the YCAM and you can see sort of an activity light flashing on the front and how the bracket works. So this is a close up of the YCAM as you can see I haven't used this bracket if I just turn it round to face the camera uh, you can see we've got an activity light here also an activity light here and this is showing that it's actually active and recording and it's recording to my uh, Synology disk station at the moment I've got the wires coming out of the back here this is the Ethernet cable and also the power cable trailing off and if I wanted to I could obviously mount this quite in a quite high up position so it gets a lot wider view and covers a lot larger area as well so this is the Disk Station Manager 3 user interface you're going to be presented with if you purchase a Synology DS211 or 211J or 211 Plus. Now we've got here a file browser for browsing the contents of the device, control panel, DSM help and also quick start. Now this is the quick start interface and it just allows you to dive in very quickly into um, the settings you're going to use most of the time on the DS211. We've also got a little drop down menu here and if I click on that we can gain access to other things as well. Now if I give you a brief look at control panel, now this allows you to fully configure your device. You've got settings for FTP, domain privileges, application privileges, 
uh, firewall, router configuration, time settings, network settings, and down the bottom here you've got all of your application settings. And here you can gain access to the media server, iTunes server, audio station, photo station, download station, file station, and the surveillance station I mentioned that can be used with the YCAM IP camera I'm testing. Now you can access this by clicking this icon here or you can access it via this quick panel up here. So I'm going to click on surveillance station here and show you the interface for it. Now the first thing you're going to see is the management console and this shows you the cameras that you've got connected to your network. Now I've only got one camera, I could have multiple cameras connected but if I double click on this one which is the Ycam 9S and this brings up some settings for the device. Now it's got the IP address, also the brand, the model, the video format I'm recording in and you can switch between MJPEG and MPEG4. Also the streaming type and username and password. We can also click test camera and this will bring up a still of uh, what the camera is looking at at the moment. You can see my hand that's obviously just uh, by the side of my keyboard there. Now if I click on video it gives me some settings for image quality also for resolution which you can switch between 160 by 120, 320 by 240, 640 by 480 and that's what's going to be recorded and also a frame rate which you can go all the way up to 30 frames per second. Now obviously the higher the frame rate the larger the file size is going to be on the recording. We've also got some image quality settings for live view and also where we're going to view the source from. Then we've got some recording settings. Uh, we can actually set it so it only records when it detects motion. Uh, we've also got event recording as well and we can also enable audio recording on it. And then we've got storage settings. This is going to be the folder it's going to actually store the files in and how long it keeps the uh, files for. We can also set a limit in gigabytes as well. This restricts the amount of hard disk space it's going to take up. And then we've got recording ske schedule as well. This is really, really good actually. Here I can click on, for example, the continuous recording button and then just click on either individual days or times on those days and it will continuously record during those hours. So if you've got a peak period and you want to record all the time between say 6 and 7 a.m., then you would click on these two here and this is going to do this Sunday through to the Saturday. I can delete these as well by clicking again once I've highlighted the delete icon. Now I've also got motion detection and alarm recording or motion detection recording and also alarm recording as well. Now I've set up motion detection recording here starting at 8 p.m. in the evening. If I click this icon again I can continue this through right till the early hours of the morning so now it's going to detect any motion that the camera picks up and start recording between 20 hundred hours and 0500 hours each day. Once you're happy with your settings you can click OK. Now we've also got some extra settings down here. We can go to the event list, uh, export, mount, settings, email, SMS, EMAP, advanced, privilege, license and the log as well to see what the camera's been doing. If I go to event list it's actually going to show you the recordings that have already taken place. Now this one here was quite interesting. If I double click on it, it will actually play me back the recording. You can see uh, somebody, it just happens to be me in my office, and I'm just going to turn off the lights to show you on this recording how good the low light performance is on the Ycam. And here you can see a burglar coming into the room, familiar face, stealing one of my video lights. So you can see the idea and this is the sort of performance you're going to get in those really really low light situations. This is with uh, all of the window light closed out and all of my studio lights switched off as well. So this is great. These are all the recordings that have taken place where it's picked up uh, any motion or in fact I had it set on continuous recording here but if it was a motion detection then the icon here would be green as you saw in that previous window. We've also got a timeline panel here and this shows you uh, various uh, information about the camera so if I select the Y cam it shows me times that it started and, st and stopped recording, um, the file path, the mode it was in, uh, start and end times here, frames per second and shows you the recording again so really good and we can 
scroll along this timeline and see what time particular events happen so that's really good and then we can switch to live view as well and this is showing you the recording like I'm moving my hands at the moment as I'm recording this screen flow video and this is under quite low light conditions as well but very good color rendition you can see on my hand there it picks up the colors very well indeed and the Wicam 9S actually performs far better than I thought now you can access this remotely as well and whilst you're in this live view you can actually click the little camera button here and you can actually take a still image so if you're actually watching it in live view say you've had an alarm sent through to you that somebody's broken into your property you can actually click through to this live view and take a snapshot and hopefully catch that intruder on the camera and get a good quality um, sort of still image you can actually set the image resolution for still capture up to 1152 by 720 so very very fully featured uh, camera and equally the Synology surveillance station uh, side of things that's supplied with the DS211 is equally as good very very fully featured software and it negates the issue to install any additional software that came with the IP camera well I hope you found this video useful the Synology Disk Station DS211, this unit on the left here, is going to cost you £220 in the UK, $300 in the US. I can't fault it at all. I trust this product a lot. I commit a lot of my data to it. I've got it set up in a RAID so that one hard drive is mirrored to the other. Very pleased with its performance. The Wicam Night S, this IP camera that you connect to your network, now this is a very niche product, it's not going to be for everyone but if you want to uh, monitor your building, your equipment, uh, maybe you're in a business and you want to stick one of these looking over all your equipment, it is a very very easy device to set up, works extremely well as you saw in this video and this is going to cost you £148 in the UK, $280 in the US. Now IP cameras are coming down in price quite a lot and you can certainly uh, take a look at the rest of the Wicam range, there's plenty to choose from but the Night S performs very well in both well lit and low light conditions. Well thank you very much for watching, please do come back soon and check out more video reviews on the Geekanoids channel. This video is sponsored by mymemory.co.uk for great prices, free UK delivery and reliable customer support visit mymemory.co.uk